In this video, we'll provide a quick overview to building a custom GraphQL API on the platform. Deeper details and a demonstration are provided after this overview in the next few videos. In the previous video, we looked at the built-in Glide Record Query API, which allows us to access any table. So the logical question is, why do we need custom APIs if we already have the table API? The answer is that your data may need to come from multiple tables or be calculated and constructed dynamically. A custom GraphQL API gives you the flexibility to control the inputs, the processing, and the outputs with precision. The major components of a GraphQL API are the API record, which contains information about the schema, authentication and authorization, one or more resolvers, and resolver mappings. We'll be covering all of these in more detail in the next few videos. For now, we'll take a quick look at an example. To do that, we'll navigate to All, System Web Services, GraphQL, GraphQL APIs. Let's open the Decision Table record. We can see some fields that are used to identify this API against incoming queries. We also see the schema that defines what the client can request. Think of this as a dictionary of sorts that governs what's available and how to request it. It's also used to generate the docs in the GraphQL Explorer. In the security section, we can see this API requires authentication and does not require any ACL authorization. The related lists at the bottom include scripted resolvers. These are bits of server-side JavaScript used to run specific actions such as retrieving or updating records. The related list of GraphQL type resolvers are typically used for error handling. And the resolver mappings connect the schema to the resolvers. For example, we may have a resolver to get a user record, which can be used multiple times to get just a user or the details of the assigned to and manager fields of a different type within the schema. Let's move on to the next video to take a closer look at the schema.